what we're going to do now is look at the way the results from the clinical trial should be treated. Now we're going to end up with two sets of data, one from the experimental group and another set of data from the control group. That is one set from the group which received the intervention and one set from the group that did not receive the active intervention. So we've got two lots of results. Results from the intervention group the results from the intervention group and the results from the control group. Two sets of results. Now these groups, remember, were treated in exactly the same way. If the intervention group were given an active drug, then the control group were given a drug Sorry, weren't given a drug, we're given a placebo in exactly the same way. So the intervention group received a pill that contained a drug, the control group received a pill that contained something known to be inactive, a placebo. If the intervention group received a drug via an intravenous injection, this group received a placebo via an intravenous injection. Both groups were treated in the same way, apart from the fact this group received some active treatment. We called that the independent variable. So we're going to end up with two lots of results. One lot of results from the group that did receive an active treatment. One lot of results from a group that did not receive an active treatment. The question is now, is there a difference between the results in this group and the results in this group. So you take the results, the first question is, is there a difference between the two groups? And to find this out, we need to apply a test. So we think, is there a difference? We then apply a test. Now the test we need to apply is a statistical test. It will take into account the number of people in the group, it will take into account the magnitude of the difference between those numbers. A statistical test. And a test which is commonly applied to compare the difference between these two groups is the t-test. The t-test will take into account the number of people in the group and it will take into account the size of the difference. Now what we're looking for in research is a result which is, and this is the key term, significant. A result which is significant. And significance is expressed in terms of a probability that there is a genuine difference between the two groups. Now you've probably seen the term p-value. Let's look at what this means because the end result of the statistical test, in this case the t-test, is that you get a p-value. What does that p-value mean? Well, if a p is equal to 1, that means that there's a 100% probability that the result that you've got arose by chance. So p equals 1 means the result definitely arose by chance. But suppose the p-value is found to equal 0.5, then that means there's a 50% chance that the result arose by chance. In other words, the p-value is describing the probability that the result arose by chance and is not a genuine result. Suppose p equals 0.2. Well, can you see the p-value is getting lower now? The p-value expresses the probability that the result arose by chance. So now there's only a 20% probability that the result arose by chance. In other words, there's an 80% probability that it is a genuine result and that there is a genuine difference between the two groups. 
Are you satisfied with that? Is 80% sure good enough? Or what about P equals 0.1? Well, P equals 0.1 means there's only a 10% chance, a 10% probability that the result arose by chance. In other words, the experimenter or the researcher is now 90% sure that the result is a genuine result, that it did not arise by chance. In other words, he's 90% sure that there is a genuine difference between the results from the intervention group and the results from the control group. Are you satisfied with that? Are you satisfied if I say your treatment has got a 90% probability that it's going to be the right treatment? Let's go a little further. P equals 0.05. So can you see 0.05 is half of 0.1? So if P equals 0.05, what the researcher is saying is there's only a 5% chance that the result arose by chance. In other words, he's now 95% sure that it is a genuine result. Now what we do as a convention, and there's no reason for this really, it's just a convention. What we do is we say a researcher can claim that a result is significant and can use the term significant if the p-value is 0.05 or less. So when p is equal to or less than 0.05 equal to or less than when p is equal to 0.05 or less then and only then can the researcher claim that the result is significant then and only then can he say that any result any difference rather any difference between the results of the two groups is actually a genuine difference if the difference is less than 0.05, then it's as if the results are exactly the same. So if a researcher claims that he's found a difference between the two groups, and the p-value is greater than 0.05, then he hasn't. He must assume that the results are actually exactly the same. Let's go a bit further. P equals 0.01. Well, can you see at this p-value, p is the probability that the result arose by chance. Here, there's only a 1% chance that the result arose by chance. In other words, the researcher is now 99% sure that the difference is a genuine difference. Well, if this level is reached, the researcher can claim that the result is highly significant. So a result of P equals 0.01 or less, the result is highly significant. Suppose P equals 0.001. Can you see now there's only one chance in a thousand that the result arose by chance? And the researcher is 999 out of a thousand sure that there is a genuine difference between the two groups. And of course the p-value could go on getting smaller. So you end up with the results of two, you end up with two groups of data, the intervention results and the control group results. You want to know if there's a genuine difference between those two groups because it is only if there is a genuine difference between those two groups that the independent variable, the intervention, is actually doing something. And this of course is providing the research methodology is, is as good as it should be, as we've already discussed. You don't guess if there's a difference between the two, you don't estimate it, you actually work it out mathematically so it can be precisely quantified. To do that, statisticians have worked out statistical tests. The statistical tests will actually quantify how sure we are that the difference is a genuine difference the p-value is the probability that the result arose by chance. Therefore, the smaller the p-value, the more likely it is 
to be a genuine result. Now a test will achieve significance if there is a big difference between the two groups. So even if you've got a fairly small number of subjects, but there's a big difference between them, then the result can be significant. Now n equals the number of subjects in the study. n is number of subjects in the study. So a significant result, that is a result with a low p-value, can be achieved if there's a big difference between the subjects, even if there's a fairly small number of subjects in the study. However, when we're looking at clinical practice, very often the results we're looking at are fairly subtle. There's not a big difference, actually, between uh, an individual in either of the two groups. What this means, if we're looking for a smaller effect, to get a significant result, we must have much larger numbers. So really, the larger the n, the larger the number of subjects being studied in the study, the better. And if you have very large numbers of subjects, then you can get significant results, even if there's a fairly subtle effect operating. So the rule of thumb is that you can get a significant result if there's a big difference between the two groups, even with small numbers. But for more subtle effects, for smaller effects, you need larger numbers to be able to get a significant result when you're analysing that particular effect. Now we've mentioned the t-test, there's many other statistical tests that can, uh, that can be used, but the p-value is always the same. It describes the likely significance of the result. Now the last thing I want to talk about is, is ethics. You might have noticed here that we're actually experimenting with, in a sense experimenting, with, with real people. Is this ethical to do this? Some people are getting a new treatment that we think is going to be a good treatment and some people aren't getting it. You know, how can we justify not treating some people? Well, because this is a new intervention, really we don't know for sure whether it's going to work or not. We only suspect that, that it might work. We don't really know. So we have to be fairly sure that it's going to work, otherwise we shouldn't uh, use it on anyone at all. But really it's still experimental, so we don't actually know. So what we tend to do is this. The control group will get the very best of conventional treatment. We'll do the very best we can for the control group on conventional treatments that we have got a fairly good idea are working. For the experimental group, well, they'll get the very best of conventional treatment and they'll also get the new treatment as well. So it's not as if we're not treating the control group, we are. We're treating the control group with the very best of conventional wisdom. But the intervention group, well, we're treating them with the very best of conventional treatment and the new treatment in addition. This is the best way people have thought of to do it so far.